Teresa Halbach by her DNA and where it's found is telling you a story. She's telling you this is where I was. assault on the state's DNA expert. Apparently it was an oversight. Your protocol told you that you were to report it as inconclusive. Isn't that right? According to Stephen Avery's attorney, Sherry Culhane makes more mistakes than most down at the Wisconsin State Crime Lab. You have one of the highest contamination records of anybody at the Wisconsin Crime Lab in Madison. I don't know. I haven't counted up all the other instances of other people. But Jerome Butin counted. Sherry Colhane is either in an incompetent leader or she's overworked if she's making that many mistakes. A blood stain in the rear cargo area of the car was consistent with the profile she developed from a Pepsi can found in the car and from Hallbuck's pap smear slides. The verdict reads as follows. We, the jury, find the defendant, Stephen A. Avery, guilty of first-degree intentional homicide as charged in the first count of the information. There are two different people who uh, help murder my sister. We have something. Leave. 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 We're sending both of them to prison. We don't want to be the ones to have to do it. Um, we, we didn't choose to be in this position. I don't ever want to be in this, in this position again. Um, but since they, they took my sister's life, they need to be held responsible for what they did. I think you have accepted this shit. sent messages like this. She, she believes it was sexual harassment. She thinks I did? Yeah. D does she recall getting a response from OLR? I, that's, I was going to ask you, what, what, what is... I'm sorry, you didn't answer that. Does she recall getting a response from OLR? You're telling me that she didn't tell you that OLR said there was no violation. Okay. Is that what you're telling me? OLR that's, wouldn't tell me that. Did Stephanie tell you that? No, she didn't. All our, um, well, and, and, and that's the point, because that's the confidential part, because... Your Honor, I need to add something that, of, of some significance. Um, I have had recent contact with Mr. Kratz and he intends on resigning. Resigning before he's removed. The DA accused of sending inappropriate text messages to several women is leaving office. I resign after saying he would not resign. Um, it's a little disturbing. The attorneys and special court commissioner Robert Jamboys had settled on a date for Kratz's removal hearing, October 8th, when his lawyer announced it likely won't be necessary. Ken decided that this was in the best interest of everyone involved. Um, he also mentioned that the Calumet County people, the residents, they need to move on. It's in their best interest. The embattled Calumet County District Attorney is waving the white flag. Ken Kratz plans to resign prior to a hearing seeking to remove him from office. Kratz wasn't in court. Instead, he said to be an inpatient treatment following the exposure of racy text messages to a victim in a domestic abuse case. That's really it. The Office of Lawyer Regulations investigation of Kratz is expected to continue regardless of Kratz's resignation as DA. He's been really humbled from his voice. That's all I can tell. So, I'm sorry. Really humbled by this whole thing.
Within the last half an hour, Fox 11 News has learned that the family of Teresa Halbach has dropped its lawsuit against the two men convicted of her murder. A hearing for the lawsuit was scheduled for Monday. However, the Halbach family just released a statement which said, while they continue to be affected by the loss of Teresa, pursuing the civil case would be both time consuming and painful. The family went on to say that now is the right time to move on. He says the Department of Justice agents failed to follow up on tips about child pornography suspects. One of the tips involved a man later accused of sexual assault of a child. The state's former prison secretary has been fired from his job over a letter that he sent to the home of one of the governor Scott Walker's aides. That letter allegedly urged the aide to destroy public records. The truth always comes out. Netflix documentary series featuring the murder case against Stephen Avery is creating a lot of buzz. And it's raising some questions. Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey, both from Manitowoc County, were convicted of the 2005 murder of Teresa Halbach. Kathleen Zellner stressed that she would only have agreed to represent Stephen Avery if he was innocent. It's the evidence. In having had a number of these cases, it has a signature of a wrongful conviction case. They only focused on him. They did not look at a lot of other suspects, certainly some very key people they should have been looking at. There was very poor investigation done of the victim's background, but that's not the key thing. The key thing was the evidence itself. The evidence okay. is just flawed. Why is a civil lawsuit important along with her action of overturning the verdict? The reason a civil rights trial is so important is it dissects the criminal trial. The jury becomes incredibly familiar with all of the evidence used to frame someone. And then it deals with the entire matter on a constitutional level. My goal in my career is to affect change through this case law across the country that will prevent these constitutional abuses. And I found that jurors are amazingly responsive to these issues. Why it's important that these rights are preserved, due process isn't abused, that the wrong people aren't convicted. I have one goal, and that's to overturn the conviction of Stephen Avery. I don't think it's my job to try to convince them all over again. Today, I sat down with Special Prosecutor Ken Kratz, who says the series is a one-sided story and not a documentary at all. And my job was to convince 12 people uh, twice from the state of Wisconsin, two different juries, two murderers, in my opinion, were, were taken off the street. If this um, serves to undermine that, and I think that's probably the real tragedy here. Coming from the former sheriff of Calumet County, whose department oversaw the investigation that led to Stephen Avery's arrest. I believe it's a defense-based, biased film. It's been 10 years. I feel very, very sorry for, for the Halbach family to have to go through this all over again. And this former sheriff says if someone had framed Avery, they were able to hide it from the state crime lab, Department of Justice, and the FBI who all worked this case. All of these individuals would have had to have had some knowledge or some way of determining that there was a cover-up being committed by Manitowoc County, which uh, definitely was not done. I call it a movie, I don't call it a documentary because it doesn't share all the facts. Sheriff Herman hasn't seen the documentary. Quite frankly, they have no clue. Stephen Avery's new appellate attorney, Kathleen Zellner, when we spoke with her outside of Wapong Correctional, where she was visiting with Avery at the end of January, said she planned to question the DNA evidence from Avery's trial.
Norm Gan is a well-respected expert on DNA and DNA testing. But since Gan has retired, the state is asking for him to be retained again in the event that any questions about DNA evidence or DNA testing comes up in the future in the Avery case. The paperwork filed earlier this week asked to appoint Norm Gan as a special prosecutor. He has yet to sign off on the request. Assistant Attorney General Tom Fallon is already a prosecutor on record. Perpetrator. The bones were moved. That was admitted. There was a human pelvis found over in the court. The bones are in different spots. The body was not burned whole. You've got only 30% of the bones recovered. You have 29 of the teeth never recovered. Um, the bones look like they were planted. The property was closed down. The coroner from Manitowoc was not allowed on the property. That actually, and was not notified there was a murder, that violates the Wisconsin statute. So when I looked at the case, I could see all kinds of problems, but I could also see a lot of evidence that could be tested, evidence that could be retested, and that we could determine it. Denied, Stephen Avery will not get a new trial in the 2005 murder of Teresa Halbach. A judge denied the motion late this afternoon, saying Avery had not met the standard to get a new trial. Avery's attorney says she'll keep fighting for a new trial. And new this morning, the Wisconsin Court of Appeals just rejected a request by making a murderer subject Stephen Avery for a new trial. Avery is serving a life sentence for the 2005 killing of Teresa Hallback in Manitowoc County. Stephen Avery's case is making its way to the Wisconsin Supreme Court, but not without challenge. The state is asking the court not to take on the case. It claims Avery has egregiously misrepresented the record, the law, the lower court's opinion, and even his own arguments. Avery's lawyer responded on Twitter saying the state's regurgitation response addresses none of the errors, it just repeats them. She says that justice is being delayed. Really, a message to quick. Um, Brett wanted to know how many pills you had. I have uh, at my house. Half? How many tails did you pick up? Fifteen, right? Uh, I have fifteen pails that I'll be bringing in. Okay. There's three at the office. Three out. Are they clean? Yeah. Evidence that could exonerate her client in the 2005 murder of Teresa Halbach was probably destroyed when investigators handed over bones from the Manitowoc County gravel pit to Teresa Halbach's family back in 2011, and they were not able to do DNA testing because of that. Thank you. Hold on, Brett. Do you want um, the pictures at the scene? Oh, man. Um... Yeah, but we, we need to pull the negatives out of those first. Okay. So if, if you can get Brenda to do that right away, separate them. The court also dismissed Zellner's argument that Fallon misled her in 2017-2018 regarding whether or not the state had the bone fragment. Hi, Tom. This is Mark Williams. Um, I'll send you an email later today, but I don't think we should do anything or respond to her at all until tomorrow. Uh, when we look into the bag and, and see exactly the pelvic bones in there or not. Um, so I, I would not respond uh, until we look into the bag uh, tomorrow morning, and then we can talk about it uh, before we send a response. Thanks a lot. Bye.